In this video, we'll discuss how to set up and install a LinkStation Pro Duo Discless Edition. This Buffalo NAS device does not come with hard drives installed like most of the LinkStation devices, so the user will need to supply their own 3.5 inch SATA drive, install it, and install the system onto the device. The process is relatively easy, but this video is designed to show you how to do it in a step by step process. So, first, you should unpack the box. Um, with the LinkStation Duo out, we can very easily access the drive bays by gently pulling the front cover off. We'll place that aside for the moment. Inside, you'll see that there's two hard drive bays. These hard drive bays will take any 3.5 inch SATA hard drive. Um, in this case, I have a Samsung 3.5 inch SATA hard drive that I will install into this product. Now, it is very important that the hard drive you're installing has no existing partitions on it. The Buffalo LinkStation will not address a system with existing data or existing partitions on it, mostly for your protection. The device does not want to erase your data, so uh, you will need to bring either a brand new device or an existing uh, hard drive that has its partitions removed. There are directions inside of the package that show you how to uh, remove any existing partitions. Installing it is very easy. You can actually install the first hard drive into either port. You can actually install both hard drives at the same time if you'd like, but generally speaking I recommend just installing the first hard drive. If you wish to use RAID 0 or 1 later, you can do that very easily once the system's uh, up and running. So you'll want to start with the uh, uh, hard drive uh, and plug the uh, SATA ports going in. Uh, we'll face the label to the right side and we'll gently slide it down the track here. And I'm going to use uh, drive bay 1 because it's obviously the first number. And I'm going to gently push it in until it clicks into place. Now if you do want to remove it later, that's relatively easy as well. You can just push down on this, uh, this plastic clamp here and then gently pull with your finger on that tab and it will pop out and then you can slide it out. Since we are going to set it up, I'm going to plug it back in until it clicks in place. And at this point, I can put the front cover back on, which uh, is done again without tools, and you just gently uh, uh, flip it on. Now, I've already plugged the power port into a uh, AC adapter. So once you've done that, you can simply plug it into the back, and I'll turn this around for you. Um, plug it right into the uh, AC power port. Uh, and then you'll notice the on switch. There's three positions, off, on, and auto. Uh, in that order. I generally recommend if you want it on all the time, and NAS devices usually should be on all the time, flip it to the middle position which is on. And I'll very gently turn it around for you again and you'll see that the uh, uh, power light is blinking. That's indicating that the device is turning on. Now this particular product will uh, continue to blink the power button, then the function light will go solid red, and then the power button will go solid blue. When that conditions happen, we're ready to actually transfer uh, the system onto the link station, uh, uh, sorry, onto the hard drive that we just installed into the link station device. Um, fortunately, the system is actually already on the device when, when it ships from the factory, so we're able to uh, install it without using any software or any firmware push utilities. So once both of those lights are solid, we'll come back and, uh, and pr uh, continue with the next process. It takes about, uh, about a minute and a half to two minutes for this device to uh, fully boot up where both lights are solid. Now both lights are, are solid, so that allows us to uh, complete with our, our next step. Um, to do that, I'm going to go ahead and turn the device around uh, very gently again. And what you'll notice on the top of this device is a function button. That's going to tell the system, only when both of those lights are solid, uh, to transfer the necessary files from its internal memory onto that hard drive and build the, uh, the right types of partitions. So what I'm going to do is gently uh, just, just press that, and you don't need to hold it down, just press it very lightly. And as I turn this back around, you'll notice that the, the function light is uh, blinking uh, red. This condition will go on for about 10 minutes while it's installing your entire operating system and necessary files, swap partition, etc. onto the hard drives. So just sit tight uh, until the device will uh, go through a complete reboot, uh, which we'll show you, and then you'll see the power button start flashing again in blue, and once the power button goes uh, solid blue and you do not have any red indicators going, that basically completes the, the transfer of the system to the drives. So we'll come back and check in on this in a couple minutes. The system is still working and installing the partitions. You may see the other uh, activity lights flashing various different colors, but uh, do wait through uh, a few more minutes until the reboot has completed. It, now the link station is booted up and it's basically ready to use. So the next step we should do is actually to plug it into uh, a network port on your network. Most of the time it means you'll use the included cable and just uh, wire this directly into the back of your router. 
But uh, if there's a Ethernet jack in the wall, or if you have a corporate network with a switch, uh, you can go ahead and just plug it into any Ethernet port. I do have an Ethernet cable ready here uh, going into, into my switch. So I'll gently turn this around again, and obviously, just like any other networking device, we'll go ahead and plug this in. Uh, this is a gigabit Ethernet device, so if you have a gigabit port, we recommend you use that. But by all means, it'll work on a 10100 port or even a 10 megabit per second port. Um, now the device will be connected to your network, and we can complete the process, which we'll show you uh, next, using a, uh, a Windows or Mac PC. Now to complete the setup process of a LinkStation Pro disk list, we'll insert the CD-ROM into a PC or Mac. Now I'll give the directions as if I'm on a PC, but more or less this program operates the same way. In most configurations, this setup window will automatically appear upon inserting it in the CD uh, drive. If not, you can go to My Computer, double-click on the CD icon, and uh, run uh, the EXE in the root directory. Uh, also, if you do not have a CD on your uh, device, you can go to our website at buffalotech.com, click on the support and downloads link and type in uh, ls-wv, which is the beginning of your part number, and then download the NAS Navigator 2 software. You can go ahead and press begin installation uh, on this. If you've downloaded from our website, uh, the directions will uh, resume a little bit later. Now this will install our NAS Navigator 2 software onto your device, um, which will take a couple minutes depending on the speed of your CD-ROM um, and, and other conditions. Uh, NAS Navigator software is designed to locate it on your, uh, on your network, uh, and then you can go ahead and configure it. So right now it's searching for link stations on the network. Now there's a bunch of different uh, link stations uh, on this network, but uh, uh, you will likely only see one. And in this case, they have default names, uh, ls-wvl, and then uh, digits from the end of the MAC address. So you'll want to select the unit that uh, matches yours. But in most cases, you'll just have one and then press Next. And then it'll uh, complete the setup process. We'll do a little bit of a tour of NAS Navigator and then go into the admin UI, which is where you would set up RAID, set up additional shares, set up our web access technology, our print server, our DLNA media server, any of the, the advanced and fun features to use on the device. Now, um, the next process will allow you to uh, map a uh, network drive. Um, and mapping a network drive will basically set up the default share to always appear in uh, my computer as a drive letter. So you'll, you will want to select the same uh, product again. Uh, if you only have one product, that, uh, that step uh, uh, won't show up. And what you'll see now is an icon on your desktop, uh, and a setup is complete. You can go ahead and close this out now, and uh, you can remove the CD from your, your device now. Uh, you will have uh, a handful of different files on your desktop, um, and these are just shortcut links. Uh, you will have something in your start menu as well. If you double click on your um, computer, you will see that it set up an L drive for your link station. And I only installed a 250 gig Samsung drive in there, so I have an L drive. Uh, I can just double click on that and, and use it. I can use File, Save As in uh, uh, in Windows or in Microsoft Word or something like that. I can create new folders, etc. Um, so you can always access that from your L drive. Additionally, you have the icon on your desktop. Uh, you can move that somewhere or delete it, um, and that'll do the same thing. This will take you actually not to the map network drive. It'll take you to the, the root share, which in this case just has the default share, which is what we map. Uh, when you launch more shares, you'll see them all there. There's the network printer. Uh, the info folder will have uh, the updated NAS Navigator software, um, so you can install it on different machines on, on your network instead of using the CD. Um, the NAS Navigator software itself uh, will find all uh, link station devices on the network, uh, as well as terror station devices, and you can click on the one that's uh, applicable. Um, I have a lot of different products on, on this network, so please disregard that. But uh, you will have your one come up. And from here, you can uh, open the shares, uh, map a more uh, remote default share, disconnect the map, create a new shortcut. You can also change the IP address. But the girth of the settings are in this uh, web settings area, so you'll want to click that. And it's going to go and open a browser for you to log in to your device. Um, 
You can see the IP address of the device here. Um, and generally speaking, you'll do all of your configuration in this web UI. The default login will be admin, all lowercase, and the password will be password, all lowercase. Upon logging in, we'll give a quick tour of this, but there is much more detailed uh, instructions online as well as other YouTube videos. But this device here is uh, running the latest firmware, which is 1.60. If you are running a uh, earlier version, you may be informed by the device uh, that a firmware update is available. There may also be a solid yellow uh, info light uh, present on the front of your device. That just means a new firmware is available. You can update from within the UI or download the updates from our website and run them from a Mac or a PC. Here is where your shares are set up. So if you create additional shares, they will appear um, as additional shares here. You can create uh, access restrictions so only certain users can use them. Um, if you go to the system tab, uh, this is where the, most of the default settings are. You can rename your device here. Instead of having a generic name like this, you can personalize it with your name or just call it Link Station or something that's easier. Um, I will show the storage tab because this is where if you install a second disk, you can uh, use it in RAID. There is another YouTube video on how to uh, use it uh, or how to configure this device in RAID. So you can click on that uh, YouTube link uh, and learn how to add a second drive and, and configure RAID. But more or less, that's the uh, entire uh, tour of the product. We've got it set up and running with a brand new disk inside. Um, if we were to enable web access, that would be done from this tab. Uh, media servers here, print servers here, BitTorrent downloader, Time Machine backup for Apple, uh, all very, very straightforward. Well, that concludes this uh, video on setting up the LinkStation Pro Duo diskless device. Thank you for watching, and please check out our other YouTube videos.